I was asked us to see him again, and he suggested that Damien had some blood tests. Who's was that, Lee? We just didn't realise that muscular dystrophy could affect Damien as well. We thought that it was just something that happened to Lee, but unfortunately it wasn't because Damien had some blood tests done and the doctor called us again and he told us that what they had found in Damien's blood and Lee's blood was the same and that after various tests that Damien also was a sufferer of Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Before DNA probes were available, only a limited analysis could be made of the rest of the family. But now, several gene probes, similar to those discovered by Dr. K. Davies, can be used to try to identify the affected X chromosome. Professor Martin Bobro at Guy's Hospital uses probes to predict more accurately what the chances are of a woman being a carrier of Duchenne. Now, since you have two sons, both affected with muscular dystrophy, it's very likely, almost certain, that you're a carrier of the abnormal gene yourself. Yeah. This is you on the pedigree chart. These are your two sons, Lee and Damien, yeah. your mum, your three brothers, and your sister. Yeah. In your family here, your brothers have been perfectly normal. They haven't had muscular dystrophy. They may well not be perfectly normal. You know that yeah. better than I do, but muscular dystrophy they've not got. That would have made me think beforehand that your mother might well not have been a carrier because she'd be quite lucky if she is a carrier to have three normal sons. Yeah. As far as your sister is concerned and the chances of her being a carrier, the question that we've got to answer before we can really start to look at that is whether you inherited this muscular dystrophy gene from your mother or whether it's something that just started off in this part of the family for the first time, because we don't know of any other family history further yeah. back of muscular dystrophy. So we've taken some blood samples from both your mother and yourself for this muscle enzyme test. Yeah. We know that the levels of this muscle enzyme, when measured in the blood, are unusually high in at least some people who are carriers of muscular dystrophy. It's not a very accurate test, but it's quite a good guide. What we've found is that, not surprisingly, the levels in your own blood are high, and that confirms that you're very likely to be a carrier, yeah. that your mother also has quite high levels of muscle enzyme in her blood. So you have probably inherited this from your mother. Yeah. If your mother has the gene as well, we'll mark her in as a carrier then there must be quite a significant risk of this having gone through to your sister. Yeah. And she could, in principle, pass it on to other children of hers. In order to try and clear up what's happening, we therefore ought to go on and do these new DNA tests on blood samples from the whole family so that we can try to trace which chromosome in your family has got the muscular dystrophy mutation on it, where it's come from, and whether it's got into your system or yeah. not. DNA is extracted from white blood cells in each of the samples. These small threads are from 10 million cells or more. The DNA is broken up into smaller, more manageable fragments by adding a substance called a restriction enzyme. This enzyme acts like scissors cutting the DNA at specific points. Once digested, the fragments are mixed with a fluorescent dye and samples from different individuals are loaded separately into wells on a gel. An electric current applied across the gel creates a gradient down which the fragments will migrate and separate out according to size. Suppose this is a piece of DNA from one member of the family, with its sequence written with the four bases. The enzyme always cuts the chain at a particular sequence of bases, which it recognises. So wherever this sequence occurs, the DNA will be cut, and there'll be a lot of fragments of different lengths. Electrophoresis separates the fragments according to size. The pattern is a genetic fingerprint. 
This person has a pattern of DNA fragments with one size of 10,000 bases, two 14s, three around 16, and so on. But in some people, there might be a misprint, and then the enzyme will not cut at this site. So the pattern of fragments differs according to the number of sites recognized. For example, there might be no 10-unit segment and one less 20, but there might be one 30 units long. To check whether the enzyme has done its job, the gel is examined under ultraviolet light. About 100,000 bands of DNA are clumped together in each lane of the gel. To pick out bands from the X chromosome near to the gene, an imprint of the fragments is transferred onto filter paper and then analysed by adding radioactive probes. Fragments of DNA that match any of the probes will show up as dark bands on a photographic negative of the gel. By comparing the results for Lee's X chromosome with the rest of the family, Professor Bob Rowe will be able to see whether anyone else is carrying the same affected chromosome. This is Mrs. Evans' cell, showing a homozygous pattern. This is her normal brother, and this is her sister, who also shows a heterozygote pattern. How many other probes have you done on this family? We've tested them with six probes in total, yes. and the only three informative ones, i.e. we can distinguish chromosomes, mm -hmm. are the three shown on the pedigree. And we therefore presume that it is this chromosome here with the 8.7 band that carries the Duchenne mutation. Yes, yes, that's what we think. Right. Hazel, we've redrawn the pedigree chart and tried to show on it this time the results of all the DNA probe tests that we've done on the blood samples that we've had from you and from the members of your family. We have all the results of the DNA tests drawn in in bright colours so that we can follow easily where the different chromosomes have come from. Your boy has a chromosome with these three markers on yeah. and we can tell your two chromosomes apart. We can see the pink one that went to your son and we can see that that pink one with the 4.4 and the 8.7 and the 22 on it is one that came from your mum. That's what we would expect because we think that she is a carrier of dystrophy, that she has passed that to you on yeah. this pink chromosome and that you in turn passed it on to your son. Your mum's two chromosomes are different from one another at this point and at that point, 4.4, 2.2 and 8.7, 7.5. Yeah. We can see that the yellow chromosome, the other one, the one that you didn't get, has been passed to your brother. And the fact that he is normal makes sense yeah. because it says that she has two chromosomes, a normal one and a Duchenne one, yeah. and that you got the Duchenne chromosome, your brother got the non-Duchenne chromosome. Your sister, if we look at her two chromosomes, we can see that the pattern of the green one comes from her father. She must have her father's chromosome. And she has also, from your mum, received that yellow chromosome, the same one as your brother, not the same one as yourself. Yeah. So she is very unlikely to be a carrier. Yeah. There is a chance of error, as you know, because yeah. the chromosomes can mix themselves up. They can swap pieces. But it's really quite unlikely, yeah. and particularly since we now know that her muscle enzyme levels are rather low as well, the chances of her being a carrier are really very small at this oh, stage. Goodness. Now, as far as you're concerned, we can tell these two, the pink and the green chromosome apart, and if you were to have more of a family, we could do that on a sample taken during early pregnancy as well. We could do the DNA tests on a sample from the pregnancy and tell not only whether it was a boy or a girl that you were expecting, but whether, if it was a boy, whether it was a boy with the Duchenne mutation carrying chromosome or the other chromosome. Yeah. And we could say quite accurately not absolutely, but quite accurately, whether that boy would be likely to have the disease or not. Yeah. So the Evans family now know where the gene has come from, who is a carrier, and they could find out the likelihood of any future children being affected. But how successful is analysis with probes in other families?
that depends firstly on having a sufficient number of other people in the family. There must be both normal and affected boys or men in the family so that one can tell what's going on. And secondly, there's an element of luck. It's a question of whether the women who are looking for advice have the right combination of probes so that we can clearly tell their two chromosomes apart from one another. That happens at the moment in about 95% of families with the range of probes that we are using now, and that will improve, but there still are occasional situations where you can't do it. Although helping families can reduce the number of boys who will inherit Duchenne in the future, as yet, research has made no impact on the condition of those already suffering from the disease. Walking has got very hard for both the boys, especially Damien, but we push them on and we try to get them to walk as far as possible because we don't want them to just give up and then go into the wheelchair straight away. So we take the boys swimming because the physio has explained to us that if the boys can learn to walk in the water, it will help them walking about at home or at school or wherever. So we went up to guys and physio got in the pool with both the boys and um, gave them confidence in the water and also because it's a sort of activity that their friends can do as well when they're, they're not cut out from, they can also go swimming the same as their pals can. A way of halting the relentless progression of Duchenne dystrophy must be found, for the disease can strike any family for the first time. Identifying carriers can never completely eliminate the problem. At least one third of the cases of muscular dystrophy arise as a result of a fresh mutation in each generation. So they're born to girls who are not carriers. And even if you could detect every carrier in the country by testing all schoolgirls or something of that sort, you would still be left with that one third of 